A little life. A little life. A little life. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to The Mild Rumpus, coming at you live from the House of Flimsy, my dilapidated one bedroom apartment that is filled with books and noise. This morning I was tagged by Jolene over at Bookworm Adventure Girl. Uh, she took a video that AJ created on his channel in honor of Valentine's Day and turned it into a tag so that she could celebrate the milestone of him hitting 1,000 subs on his channel. So congrats AJ, this one goes out to you. It's a quick and easy tag. There's only five questions and speaking of quick and easy, Happy Valentine's Day. The first prompt is Be Mine. This one focuses on queer romances. I don't read a lot of romance, so what I did was I, I tried to think of books that have some sort of same-sex relationship within it, and the first one that I thought of was Alice Walker's The Color Purple. I first read this book when I was probably 11 or 12 years old. I've reread it several, several times throughout the years. It's one of my favorites. It's a five-star read, and I am not generous with my five stars. I've only given out 43 out of over 1,300 books that I've read. I'm sure you're familiar with the story. It's been adapted for the stage and screen, but as a book, it is brilliant. The entire story is told through the voice of Celie, through conversations she has with God and letters that she writes to family and friends. The Steven Spielberg film only kind of alluded to the relationship between Celie and Shug Avery. I know the musical version kind of went further into it, but there's a whole third act that the film the original film adaptation just kind of it, it went to the cutting room floor. If the characters in this next book were to post about their relationship on Facebook, I think they would classify it as it's complicated. Anne Rice's Interview with the Vampire. And again, this is a case of the film version kind of going, mm-hmm, 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 yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Now the TV series, on the other hand, there's no question. This book is just as much about the relationship between Lestat and Louis as it is about vampires. Ooh. Side note, if you like Interview with a Vampire, be sure to check out Carmilla. It's a story about a sapphic vampire and it predates Dracula. And Dracula is pretty much a ripoff of Carmilla. This next book is a more recent release. It came out in 2020. The sequel to it is coming out later this year and it's one of my most anticipated books. And that's The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. This is the story of Linus Baker, who is a caseworker for the department in charge of magical youth. He's instructed to go investigate an orphanage that is supposedly filled with these dangerous kids. But when he gets there, he finds that they're just a bunch of lovable misfits. It's really a, a beautiful book about chosen family. And this book is just like a hug. It's really weird, but this book was giving me Roald Dahl kind of vibes. If you're a fan of his work, you might like The House in the Cerulean Sea. And there's no way I could leave out James Baldwin. Come on now, Giovanni's room, duh. The book is set in Paris. It's the 1950s. It's written by Baldwin, so the language is exquisite. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Prompt number two, Meet Cute, a book you want to read again for the first time. This is a recent read for me. I grew up watching the movie version of this story and I thought there's no need for me to ever read the book because I've seen the movie a million times. But then I saw the Folio Society was publishing it and I went, hmm, maybe I should pick it up. Maybe I should check it out. I'm really glad I did. The never ending story. Just from a reading experience, the book is beautiful. It's told using two different colors, red and green, and it's illustrated throughout. What I found really shocking is that the movie that I grew up watching and loving turns out to be a really horrible adaptation of this book. If you think you know this story and these characters are going to be astounded by the plot of this book, it is epic. Another book I would love to read again for the first time is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. If you know, you know, I don't wanna spoil it, but I will tell you, when you finish it, you're gonna turn back to page one and wanna read it all over again. This is a book that I read in one sitting. It's one of the few books I found that's actually scary. This next book is polarizing, but it's another one of my five-star favorites. A little life. Hopefully that turned out okay. Every time I see someone reading this book in public, I kind of perk up. Um, because first of all, it's a chunky book, right? It's, it's she thick. But if you've read the book, you can kind of gauge where they're at in the story based on the thickness of the book. And you know what sort of trauma they're about to experience. Triggers out the wazoo. This is not a book written for the faint of heart. 
Still one of my favorite books of all time. There's a series I would love to read again for the first time. It was one of the most magical experiences I ever had as a reader, but we don't talk about that book series because the author decided to ruin her legacy. So I would love to reverse the hands of time and read the book before the tweets. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't picking up what I'm dropping, they're right over here. Wizards. Prompt number three is The Friend Zone. Hyped books that are just okay for me. I know there's gonna be some feelings about these books. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna arrange them in order of fandom from like least upset to, um, ah! And here's my disclaimer. I don't hate these books. I don't dislike these books. These books are okay. They're okay by me. Okay, if you're a fantasy nerd or if Robert Jordan is your bro, just, okay. The Will of Time series by Robert Jordan. Why in the world does it need to be this long? Every single book in the series is over a thousand pages. Why? Why? The first book was walking, 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 more walking. I want to love it. I've invested a lot of time. I'm on book five. I mean, you do the math. If I hated it, I wouldn't be on book five. But where, where are we going? And can we get there? I'm not gonna tell you anything about this next book. It's best if you just go in blind, not knowing anything about the characters, the plot. Don't even look at the title. In fact, just don't even look at this video. Never let me go. It's not a bad book. In fact, it's a very good book. It's the hype. The hype is just over the top. You guys are too much. If your walls are painted black and you have any sort of skull or raven on your bookshelf, look away. If we were villains, put me in a reading slump like no other book ever has. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I hated the characters. I could not stand the Shakespearean quotes every other line. I liked the book the first time I read it when it was called Secret History. And this is the part of the video where we just throw gasoline on the fire. A Court of Thorns and Roses. Listen, I am not here to dump on Sarah J. Mass. I actually enjoy reading Sarah J. Mass. I loved the Throne of Glass series. I read the whole thing during the pandemic. I read this during the pandemic. I just think it's funny that it started off as this reimagining of Beauty and the Beast, and then it just devolves into pure, unadulterated fairy smut. I haven't read any of the Crescent City books yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I have all three of them. I'm not, I'm not being facetious. I really am looking forward to reading them. How are we doing? Are we okay? You still with me? Do you hate me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Number four, enemies to lovers. How appropriate. Books you didn't think you'd like, but ended up loving. I've only been around for a hot minute. This channel is about three weeks old, but if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I talk ad nauseum about Octavia E. Butler. She's one of my favorite writers. I just finished reading all of her works. I'm very sad about that. So you might be surprised to find out that for years I saw the cover of Kindred and I thought this is like a young adult novel, you know, Diary of a Slave Girl. Imagine my surprise when I cracked the book open and found out that it was a science fiction historical novel slave narrative and it was mind blowing and it's another five star read. I guarantee you, you will not be able to put this book down. It's a perfect place to start with Octavia E. Butler's work. Mmm, mmm. I'm not gonna front, I'm gonna tell the truth. I bought this next book because I loved its cover and I wanted to feel smart reading it. Crime and Punishment. I really questioned whether I was going to be smart enough to read and understand a Russian classic book of literature. This Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition not only looks badass, but it is a great translation. If you are interested in diving into his work, this is a great place to start. Don't be scared by the size of the book. It's a page turner. It goes really, really quick. I know I started the video off by saying that I don't give out many five-star reads and like every single book I've talked about has nearly been a five-star read, but this is another one of them. It's the Neapolitan Quartet by Elena Ferrante. When I read the first book, I was not a fan. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I thought it was boring. 
I thought, I am not the target audience for this book. And an entire year, maybe a year and a half passed. And uh, for some reason, I picked up the second book and I, I said to myself, well, you started it. You might as well see what happens in the second book. And the second book was really kind of the gateway uh, where, where I kind of found my way into the story. And now it's one of my favorite series. I recommend it to everyone. It just goes to show that sometimes a book has to find you just at that perfect moment. And if you are in a series and you feel like, mm, this ain't doing it for me, maybe put it away, step away from it, revisit it, and it still might not be your jam. And that's okay, you're not going to connect with every book. Um, but don't give up on them so easily. You never know, you never know. And now, at last, the time has finally come to discuss, drum roll please, brrr, book lovers. <laughs> if you've been watching my channel, you would know that I picked this book because I did not expect to like it, okay? Romance is not a genre that I gravitate to. But one of my big reading goals for 2024 was to push myself as a reader and start looking at those genres that I don't read or that I find, in this case, cringy. My assumption, and you know what you do when you assume, was that this was just gonna be pure smut, softcore porn, disguised with a cute little cartoon cover. And surprisingly enough, this book didn't have a lot of spice. What it did have was a lot of romanticizing of New York and books and authors and all things bookish. When I finished chapter 14 and I saw that there was an Octavia E. Butler reference, my jaw hit the floor. I'm not gonna lie. And that was not the only book reference that is made. In fact, at the end of this edition, I don't know if this is true for every single copy, but there is even a Nora and Libby's ultimate reading list, which I was like, oh, huh. So what do I wanna say about my experience of reading a popular romance novel? I would like to confess that I think my assumptions were incorrect. The book was not uh, what I expected. It wasn't as terrible as I thought it was going to be. And I know that's a glowing review, but I really, I was dreading this book. And it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't a bad experience. Is it something that I would like pick first thing? No, um, but having finished a book and leaving feeling optimistic and hopeful was sort of a new experience for me. And I don't know if I really like that. I think this is more about me than the book. And hey, I wasn't a dummy. I picked this book on purpose. I knew it was gonna be about books and people who love books. The title is Book Lovers, although you'll be surprised what this is referring to. See, this story is deep. It's very much a friends to enemy trope. It's predictable. But what I liked about the book is that it was very self-aware and Emily Henry kind of pokes fun at the story and the characters. There's a self-awareness of what romance novels are and the book kind of turns meta sometimes, and I wasn't expecting that. I thought that was really clever. As far as spice, um, there was a lot of restraint, a lot of restraint. Nothing happened for the longest time. And then finally there was, you know, tingling and heaviness between my thighs. But they didn't get down and dirty till well after page 200. And on that note, it's almost 400 pages. And I do think it's a little ironic that a book about a book editor is 400 pages. Did it really need to be 400 pages? Am I mad that I read it? No. Did I enjoy it? Sure, it was okay. This could easily go in that uh, hyped book that was just okay for me category. Were there moments where I rolled my eyes? Absolutely. There were two in particular. One line where she says, I am Heathcliff. And the last line of the book, which I would never dream of spoiling for you. Would I read Emily Henry again? Yeah, I would. I would. I really want to see if I just got lucky by choosing... <laughs> got lucky. I really wanted to see if I just got lucky by choosing book lovers. So I thought I would read another book by Emily Henry and compare the two. Plus, I mean, vacation, March, spring break. 
it goes with the theme. All right, last prompt. Here we go. Number five, the breakup. Books you DNF'd. Well, I have a confession. I have never DNF'd a book. Can you believe it? I will see it to the bitter end. The reason being is I don't feel like I can say I dislike a book or I hate a book or that book was bad if I didn't finish it. It takes so much work and energy for someone to write a book. The least I can do is finish reading it. And uh, sometimes it is very painful, like that if we were villains book, I really wanted to stop. Now there is one book that I DNF'd. And in this case, it is, I did not with that book. And I did quite a rant on it the other day on a Girl Scout cookie tag, which I guess I'll link at the end of this video. If you want to see it, I won't beat a dead horse. But that book that I read, finished, and hate is The Giving Tree. And I know a lot of people love The Giving Tree, but I find the lessons and the relationships that it portrays to be extremely toxic. And I think that uh, that's not such a great thing considering that it's a book that is geared to young audiences. Again, I could be completely misconstruing the message. If you love The Giving Tree, if you think that it is a, a beautiful book with a beautiful message. Please let me know what in the world that message is because I fail to understand it. Enlighten me. That's it for the tag. Thank you so much, Jolene, for tagging me. AJ, congratulations again on a thousand subs. Speaking of which, make sure you feed that algorithm. Hey, it's, it's Valentine's Day. Show me a little love. Before I let you go, I wanna tag a few people. And let me just say, if you're watching this video, tag you're it okay virtual tag if you want to do it by all means go for it i would love to see your response but these are some booktube channels that are brand new have less than 100 subscribers and could use some love so go check them out we've got anna b they have two subs jessica books and martha pennington have four Fallon's Tone has seven and Max Day has 73. And then I'd also like to tag these two booktube channels that I love to watch. They're more established, but they everyone could use more love. Go check them out. Book Time with Elvis. I said this in my last video. If it weren't for Mark over at Book Time with Elvis, this channel would not exist. Uh, he created this video called Booktube Needs You and it completely motivated me to get off my butt and make my first video. That's that very day I, I, I told myself, look, January's almost over. Let's just make, maybe do this next year. And then his video popped up in my recommendations. I watched it and I decided to just jump up and make the first video. And that was the start of this channel. So thank you, Mark, tag your it. And then uh, last but not least, the man, the myth, the legend. I'm a little scared to tag him, but I'm gonna do it because I heard him complain that no one ever tags him in these kinds of videos. So we'll see what happens. Steve Donahue, who who puts out like 20 videos a day. I don't know how he does it and still finds time to read, but um, you are it, my friend. So that is it for now. I will um, see you very soon. I hope you have a great Valentine's Day. Uh, call someone, hug someone, tell them that you love them and that you appreciate them. And uh, if you're all by yourself, just give yourself a hug. Okay, be kind to yourself and I will see you next time. Bye.